some positive things about our country. Amen. They need to hear some positive things about what God can do for them. In your life today, I want you to stop and think about where God has brought you from. I want you to think about the times that you have had a doctor's appointment, you didn't know the results, and God healed you. I want you to think about the times that you were struggling and you didn't know what way to go, but God directed you over in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Now, I want you to understand something. We are going to be talking about positive, and, and I've asked Brother Eric, Brother Darrell, and I told Brother Dorsal just to get ready. We are going to be talking today. I'm going to be talking when they're done here, but I want you to stop and think about positive things in your life. What God has done for you in your life right now. Amen. I thought about young people. I, I got to see some high school games on Channel 1 now. Spectrum, they're showing local high school football games now. And I was watching. I said, praise the Lord. You know, I get to see some football. <laughs> Amen. And, and now, praise God, on the 20-something of October, the black guys will start playing again. So I'm going to thank God for that, too. That's positive. Amen. So, but today I want you to stop and think about the day you got saved. I want you to think about what God has promised you in this negative world we're living in, what the positive things are about God. God said, for God so loved the world, all of us, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Now, if that don't stir you up, something's wrong with you. Amen. You've been believing, you've saved, God has blessed you and brought you home into a church that preaches the word of God. I want Brother Daryl. I want him and what God has put in his heart this morning. I want us to realize that we have been blessed by God, that we have been taken care of by God, and that he's going to take care of his children no matter what this world says or does. Amen, amen, amen. amen. I want us all to stand and let's praise our Lord today for all the positive things in our life that God has provided for us. Amen. Amen. We need to thank our God today. Thank Jesus for all of you. The church is filling back up, praise God. And I want to thank him for that. Praise our Lord for that. How many of you love the baptism? We baptized 11 last Sunday morning. Russell, we held on to you. You were all right, brother. We had a time of our lives. We enjoyed it. We had a time. We were praising God. Brother Daryl, come on. Amen. Come on, brother. Praise Jesus today. Positive. God's been well, good. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. I don't know, man. You keep that up. <laughs> If you miss that, but I'll be shouting. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord today. All right. Positive thinking. Positive thinking comes from thinking positively. Amen. 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 If you think negative, that's what you're going to act like. Yeah. Amen. I am positive that I know my Redeemer will live. Amen. Amen. I am positive that I know that He will take care of me no matter what the situation is. Amen. 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 Hey, uh, Brother Johnny always said, hey, man, God will always provide for us. It might not be steak, but good old round Kentucky bologna tastes pretty good too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Positive thinking. Amen. On the Mount of Sermons, if you go to the Bible, got your Bible with you. Let's turn over to Matthew, the sixth chapter. You got your Bible, turn over. It's not on the board. All right. It ain't going to be on the board. It's going to be in your Bible. All right. Amen. 
got to turn around and say, you got your cell phone, just got your Bible app in there? Yeah. Amen. I've got one of those two. I carry them. And I ain't got my boy, my boy, he'll lay up with me. Amen. And you can look at that. Let's go to Matthew, the sixth chapter. Sermon on the Mount. We're going to start back to the 25th verse. Now, this is in relationship to being anxious or anxiety or being worried. All right? And God's telling us over here that in these verses that He's got everything taken care of. Why should we worry when we've got God on our side? Amen? Amen. Why should we be depressed when we know that Jesus is with us every day? Amen. Amen? Why should we worry about what's going on in this world we're living today when we know that God has got a great plan for us and that as we walk with Him and talk with Him and be with Him, He's going to take us to heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. What are we worried about? Amen? Amen. My brother said, you know, I said, I don't know why that priest wears that glass shield over that little car he runs around in. Why is he afraid somebody's going to kill him? He's going to go to heaven or what? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> so, you know, hey, don't worry. God's got you. Amen. 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 God's got you. It says, therefore I say unto you, take no thought of your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, how they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, and are ye not better, are ye not much better than they? Which of you, taking a thought, can add one cubit to his stature? Amen? I mean, we can't, we can't add nothing, it's all God. We can't add, but God can, amen? God multiplies. Yes. Amen? He yes. said, and why take ye, why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they, uh, how they to toll not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into heaven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what whether all shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles seek, okay? Amen. All the world out there, all they're looking for is money. Yeah. Power and prestige. Amen. God is just looking for a few faithful folks. Amen. 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 A few faithful folks that will hold up Jesus to a lost and dying world. For your heavenly Father knoweth you have need of all these things. But seek ye first. Now this is the catch. This is the catch part. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. All right? Take no thought of tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So what I'm trying to say is, folks, that God will take care of every situation you're in. You know, I've been, I've been down, and I've been on top of the mountain. I've walked in the valleys in between, but God's always been right there. Amen. He's never let me down. When we worry, folks, it ain't doing nothing but causing more heartaches and troubles. But when we put God first in our lives and let God lead us and direct us and direct our paths, my friend, let me tell you what He'll do. He will help you out in every situation and He'll always make a way for you. Amen? A long time ago when I was a young boy, that was a little song. Oh, it was a little song. Oh, I guess it was a little boy. Maybe it was a little old little boy. But anyway, I was a younger man. It was called Don't Worry. Be Happy. <laughs> uh, actually, that song uh, uh, was written on September 24th, 19, well, September 24th, 1988. That song was number one a cappella song and the global chart. The first song that was ever number one without music a cappella. That was it. The guy that sung it was Bobby McFerrin. And it goes like this. I'm not going to sing. I'm just going to read the words to you. So here's a little song I wrote. You might want to sing it. Nope. Fine. Don't worry. Be happy. In every life, we have some troubles. But when you worry, you make it double. Don't worry. Be happy. Now, he says, now this is a little song I wrote. I hope you learn it. Nope. 
for no. Like good little children, don't worry. Be happy. Amen. Amen. This is what God is trying to tell us to do today, folks. Let's don't worry about the little things. Let's don't worry about all these things. God has got everything taken care of for us. Don't worry. Let's be happy. Amen. Let's be happy that we know that our name is enrolled in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. Amen. Let's be happy that we know that Jesus Christ is saved. One day is going to come back and rapture the old church. And we're going to go home to be with Jesus in the air. And folks say, well, we'll see all those that's already gone on. We'll be able to uh, enjoy the ceaseless ages of eternity. Let's don't worry. Let's be happy. Amen. What's going on around our world today? We should be a witness to all these folks saying, hey, look what troubles you got. But let me tell you what we're going to do. We're not going to worry. We're going to be happy because we've got Jesus Christ in us. And our Lord and Savior will take care of us no matter what is going on around the world. Amen. Don't worry. Be happy. Amen. Put a smile on your face. Amen. Even though they might not be able to see you smile here, let them see the eyes smile. Amen. Amen. Let them see the eyes smile. Let them see that your reflection is that I'm going to heaven. Amen. 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 Last two verses. We'll let the, one of the other brothers get up here. Ephesians 4, 6 and 7. Well, we flip this. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made unknown and known unto God. Folks, if you ask, what does the Bible say? You shall receive. Amen. 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 Think about it. If you ask, you shall receive. And it says, and the peace of God which passes all understanding. Man, oh man, do you remember the time you got saved? Amen. Yeah. Do you understand it? No. I don't know how God took this old broken heart, this old black heart of mine, and got in there and come into my heart and life and took that old heart out and put it in a heart of love and never left a scar. Amen? I don't know how He did that. But he did. Amen? He's just that good. And he passes on understanding. Why would he save someone like me? Do we understand that? I don't understand it all. But you know what? I'm glad he did. Amen? Yeah. I'm glad he did. And the peace of God which passes on understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Amen? The only way I know to tell you to live today is to live God's way. The only thing I can tell you today is to look at God in all the situations you have, no matter how big, no matter how small, and ask God to lead you and guide you in that direction. Don't worry about the things, but let me tell you what we need to be. Be happy. Amen. Aren't you glad you're an old-time Christian? Amen. Don't that make you happy? Aren't you glad you know Jesus as your personal Savior? Aren't you glad you can be happy? Aren't you glad you get to come to the house of the Lord on Sunday morning yes. and worship God in spirit and truth? Yes. We should be happy. Yes. Aren't you glad? Amen. Aren't you glad we can come and love our fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and say, come on, brother and sister, let's go. Let's get together and let's be happy because God loves you. May God bless you.
And he said, why would you assume that I would be the smartest? They said, because your IQ is the highest. And he said, actually, the man with the smallest IQ in that room was the smartest because he surrounded himself with everybody who was smarter than him. <laughs> and it dumbfounded the reporter. Yeah, yeah. I had a pastor one time who said, Eric, if you want to be a better preacher, listen to better preaching. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah, babe? Yeah. How many people today, when you walk through these doors, don't raise your hand because I know... You're inclined to raise your hand when you get asked a question. But how many people, when you walk through these doors this morning, weren't feeling the greatest? Maybe you weren't the happiest you've ever been. Maybe some of you might be feeling depressed. I mean, it is an election year, right? <laughs> Everything is negative right now. Everything is bad. Everything is terrible. But this week, God gave me a blessing, and I want to share that with you real quick. Amen. After the baptizing, which was amazing, 11 people, Amen. 11 people were baptized. I had a dream. And in that dream, I was preaching here, and I was preaching about filling out my resume for heaven. And it was so powerful and strong when I woke up at 2 a.m. In my dream, the church was just shouting, yeah. rejoicing. Sarah was shouting. She's quiet. <laughs> That's how awesome this dream was. And I got up and I said, Sarah, I just had the best dream. And it's 2 a.m. And she's like, That's great. <laughs> but not that long ago, God gave me a blessing, and I shared it with the church, and when I saw you were going to preach this morning, God said, that's what you're going to share. So today, I asked Brother Dorsal, Brother Darrell to come up here with me. I don't have the road, as I promised. Sometimes in my life, I get down. Sometimes I feel depressed. Yeah. Sometimes I need a little jump. I was in the hills of eastern Ohio in my little work car one day on the side of a hill looking over into West Virginia, Wheeling, West Virginia. And God gave me this testimony. He said, go to the back of your car and open up the trunk. I'm by myself, okay? People see me, they probably think I'm crazy. You all think I'm crazy anyways, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got out of my work car and I went to the back of the trunk. And God said, what's back there? And this was what was back there. Oh, I felt one of you. <laughs> I said, what's this mean? And the Lord said, sometimes, Eric, you need a little jump. And I thought about that a little bit, and I shared this with the church one Sunday night. You see, sometimes we need a little jump. Sometimes we need a little excitement. Sometimes we need, brother White, we need a little juice. <laughs> hey, Amen. We need to, we need to get moving, get going. You see, on these jumper cables, there's a red and a black. You know what those are? Anybody under the age of 16 who doesn't drive. No, but the, what's, what's the black? Uh, I believe black is there. boy! We're going to have a driver there. What's the red? Positive. Thanks, all of you under 16. Appreciate it. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, see, now, the way I look at this, the negative does not always mean bad. Sometimes it means what? Rounded. You gotta sneak it to something that's grounded, which usually is someone who's in the Word of God. Someone who knows Scripture. Someone who's rooted and grounded. In the positive, the juice, that's your spirit, amen? Grab that for me. That's someone who's got the Spirit of God. Someone who understands the excitement of what it means to be saved. 
Someone who is not afraid to stand up and tell the world that there's a way to live right. That there's a difference between living right and living wrong. Amen? Amen. And they've got the juice. They've got the spirit of God. Now see, when you put the ground on a, on a live battery, and you put the red on the positive on a live battery, and you hook it up to your <coughs> dead battery, what happens? The juice from that battery starts flowing and charging the this battery. Amen. Do you know why I feel I feel God now, Pastor? Amen. I feel that. Do you know why the Bible says it's important for us to gather together? <coughs> why is that? People say, I don't need to go to church. I can watch it on TV. You can watch it, but you can't get hooked up to it. Oh, amen. That's why it's important that we, the Bible says, gather together, amen. As what? As we see what approaching? That day approaching. Do you see it approaching? Amen. That's why the world is so negative, amen. Because they don't have Jesus in their life. They don't have the Spirit of God in their life. And as that day approaches, the Bible says that the devil's as a roar. Seeking who we may devour, walking to and fro, amen? And we who are Christians, as we see that day approaching, it behooves us to be in the house of God. Because when we get a little down and we get a little negative, when we gather with our brothers and sisters, those who are grounded in the Word of God, those who have the Spirit of God, and we are feeling negative and down, when we come into the house of God, we can get our batteries charged up, amen?
I saw all these young children Amen. in the church today. And you know what my prayer is each night when I go to bed. First part of it. God, thank you for watching over the little children. Hey, and God, I pray, Lord, that you'll continue to watch over them each day. Bless the Lord, I tell you what, people want to rebuke the children from coming to the Lord today. And I read in the God's Word one time where they, uh, they were rebuking the children. Jesus said to them, rebuke them not, but let them come unto me. Bless the Lord. I tell you what, today we need to let the little children come to the Lord today. Amen.
when you see everything going negative, remember God and you have a comforter, the Holy Spirit, that lives in your heart. That he may abide with you forever. He's going to stay with you forever and ever and ever. But I'm seeing the signs are coming. I'm seeing it are coming. If you ain't ready, get ready and know Jesus today before you leave this church house. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. They don't feel what we feel. They don't know what we know, because God has gave us. And I'm like that little boy after fishing. Somebody said, did you see Jesus when you got saved? Did, did you see him? Did you hear the fish? He said, no, but I felt that fishing pole, a tug on that pole. Yeah. And it's like in your heart when you get saved, I never saw Jesus. I never heard Jesus, but I felt that tug on my heart that night. And it made a difference in my life. How about you all? Yeah. It's going to make a difference in your life knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Amen. When the world cannot be seen because it seeth him not, neither knows him. But we know him, for he dwells within us. When you're negative and you're down and you feel like no one loves you, Jesus loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Jesus is loving you. And shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I want to ask you, where do you stand with God? Are you positive today? Are you negative like the world? Are everything going wrong? Nobody's happy anymore. I'm happy. How about you all? Amen. I got born again. I got saved. How about you all? Amen. How many of you love the Lord today? How many of you are glad you're a Christian today? How many of you are glad that you love Jesus today? He's a common. He's a common. It's get, get ready. Get your family in there. We're, we're in revival in the church. We've been in revival for a long time. Even through a pandemic, we've been in revival. You can't tell me that God sees your all's hearts and they've been cleaned up. You are not trying to sin like the world, but you're trying to be clean and be an example and live a life that God can see Him in you. Yeah. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And I only got three more verses here. And I'm going to tell you, I want to ask you today, do you know Jesus in your life? Oh. Amen. Amen. We want to go down to 21. <clears throat> Yet a little while, and the world see me no more. But you see me. Because I live, you shall live also. He, he was resurrected, praise God. Came up out of that tomb. And guess what? One day all of us are going to pass on if the Lord tarries, but we will come up as Jesus and we will be known as we are known. And that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath, he that hath my commandments and keeps them. How many is following the Word of God? How many is living the Word of God? How many people can see you outside of this church know that you're a child of the King? You ain't going to see me uh, tipping, uh, tipping tipsy on Facebook. <laughs> Woo! We got what? <laughs> you ain't going to see me saying words that I wouldn't say in God's house out there in the world. I'm living, I'm living the life that God said live in order to make it to heaven, and I plan on getting there. Amen. Amen. He that have my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Do you love Jesus this morning? Amen. Are you glad you're a Christian today? Do you love him with all your heart? And I will love him. Man, I love Jesus. I'm going to be honest with you. Yesterday, It was one of the hardest days of my life. I love the Pickle family and I love Sister Arlene. But when a young man comes to you one day in that van, I was driving, he said, 
Pastor, you have to preach. He said, I will help you get that van running. And I will pick up those elderly. And I will make sure that this took care of. And that boy was here early every Sunday. He loved the elderly. He made them laugh. He enjoyed his life. Gosh, it's scary. Now it's, it's, it's parking. Now it's done. You finished your last job for me. And now you're home. And he's waiting on Arlene and all the family and all of us to meet Gary again in heaven. One of these days, praise God. We're both standing together right now. Get us all an invitation. <clears throat> praise Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. If you don't know the Lord, if you've never been saved, if you're having a hard time, if you're negative in life, I'm so tired of negativity. I'm so tired of people saying, I can't make it. I'm going through too much. Let me tell you, I've had darts thrown at me time after time after time. I've had things done, things said that were not true. But I tell you what, I had a vision. I got a vision to get through that gate. And I'm going to get there. How about you? I want you to come forward. If you've been negative this week and you're not positive, if you don't know Christ, if you haven't been good to home and been good to your parents, one thing I can't stand is someone to be disrespectful to her mom or dad. I want her to be positive. Your mom and your dad took care of you when you were a baby. Sometimes it wasn't easy raising you. They don't like the children to respect the grandparents. I cry when I see families. No one has respect to the, the mom, the dad. Sometimes they would work 12 hours just to make sure you have bread on your table. Thank <laughs> you. 